Hello everyone, this is Ashish and today we are going to discuss how we are going to go to moon. In the process of doing that, we are going to get a taste of orbital mechanics. We are going to understand how we navigate in space because trust me, the way we navigate on earth that if I were to go over there, I'm going to walk straight over there. If I were to go left, I'm going to walk in this direction. That is not, not how you navigate in space. On the other hand, how you navigate in space, the smaller perspective when the distance and the times becomes so small and that's when what we do what we are doing on the daily basis but when the giant celestial bodies you're talking about that and the gravitational acceleration and the gravitational action of each and every body comes into the picture it's a completely different beast but it is pretty easy to understand it is all going to start from, from something that you studied before senior secondary that is three laws of motion i'm going to explain if you want to go to moon for example this is your planet earth green in color sorry blue in color yes visible this is your planet earth and you want to go to moon now moon is let us say this distance away from you so what you're going to do is you're going to make a simple trajectory and the simple sense the way we work on this planet is that if I have to go over there I'm going to go straight up because displacement that the distance is going to be smallest is the quickest path let's do that but the only problem is there's acceleration due to gravity and you'll say how much is that only 9.8 meter per second square that's not much well, I'm going to give you a taste. By the way, if you did not know, the distance between the Earth and the Moon is somewhere around 300,000 kilometers. All right. The Earth's atmosphere ends somewhere around 70 kilometers. All right. All right. Now, I will show how it is going to be like. For example, you are launching anything from the surface of Earth this is your surface of earth looking pretty horizontal when you look in a close-up manner you want to toss something straight up and the distance we are going to talk about that let us see how much of the initial velocity is required to reach a distance of 70 kilometers losing all the energy so that the final velocity becomes zero what is going to be the initial velocity if the acceleration due to gravity is continuously acting as 9.81 meter per second square. Now, the three uh, equations of motions are pretty simple. You must have studied. The simplest equation would be this. Velocity will be equal to distance by time. But this is so simple that we have considered acceleration to be exactly zero. But if acceleration comes into the picture, the three formulas that we are going to use is are V is equal to U plus AT s is equal to ut plus half a t square and v square is equal to u square plus 2 into a into s taking in keeping it in consideration that these velocity and accelerations are actually vector quantity right so direction will become important now we are going to use this formula v square is equal to u square plus twice of a into s okay very good now see the final velocity i said is going to be zero the initial velocity we have to find out and acceleration due to gravity will be 9.81 in the negative direction that is why i've kept the minus sign over here we'll multiply it with 2 and that will be multiplied with 70 into 10 to the power 3 meters because finally we want the velocity in meter per second if you calculate it it is going to come somewhere around 1185 meter per second that's no joke. That is actually more than three times the velocity of sound. You're moving at Mach of three. And that is the initial velocity that you require. That will add, like require a big explosion for you to throw something at that velocity. Require a huge amount of velocity. But you'll say, Ashish, it's not like I'm going to toss a rocket up with some initial velocity and I'm going to expect it to land on moon. Obviously, a rocket does not work like that. It will be having some initial velocity and continuously the propellants will be burning, the engines will be firing and the velocity will be increasing because we are giving it acceleration. Yes, but still it will require a huge amount of energy. Is it possible to reach on moon? 
yes it is possible by just directly going over there but it will require a tremendous amount of energy tremendous amount of fuel and that's not only that you will require a very high level of technology also because the moment you increase the amount of propellant and that's the moment you have increased the mass that you're going to carry along with you so your other material should be super light if you want to do that why to do that if we can do the same thing reaching on moon the only thing is that we are not going to use that much energy so this is how a rocket will actually launch if it has to land on moon again our planet earth is going to be blue in color okay now what we actually do is that our initial propulsion will be something like this what very small yeah this is somewhere where your moon is going to be now what i'm going to do is that initially i'm going to go straight up have you ever seen a rocket launching sideways no because there's a reason for that if you have to travel this much distance it is better to travel in this direction than to travel in this direction why is that because this is thick thick atmosphere and it requires a lot of energy to go through it that surface drag is going to come into the picture it will generate a lot of heat it will become a difficult business the better manner would be that you go straight up and when the atmosphere becomes thin you start to steer in the sideways direction okay now you must have studied at some point or the other the projectile motion right so the projectile motion is pretty simple it uses the same three equations of motion It's just going to tell you that what is going to be the total distance that you're going to travel in x direction or what is going to be the total distance traveled in y direction range and all those things that you must have studied at some point so we are going to use something like that but here's the thing you throw something over here with some horizontal velocity which actually in case of rockets we cannot have what about you throw the same thing from some height so obviously you can have horizontal velocity right now but also it is going to travel a larger distance so what we cannot build towers this tall on earth and then launch a rocket from there what we actually do we go straight up and then we steer in the right direction or the left direction depending on what we want to do so this was your original projectile all right now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to turn the direction of rocket so this was my original direction of rocket let me make it a little bit bigger so that you understand in a better manner now we are going to focus highly on earth sir after some time we are going to start focusing on moon but now it is a big task for us to leave the gravity of Earth. We are not actually going to completely leave it, but you will understand in a moment. So, we go something like this. We are going to cause propulsion in this direction. And it's going to go something like this. Now, over here somewhere, we are going to change the direction. And now we are going to increase the horizontal velocity. Or we are going to use the propulsion in the horizontal direction. What this will do, it will actually change the trajectory over here. What will happen? The trajectory now will be looking something like this. What is this? This is kind of weird. Because we started from here. It would be same as if you had the initial launch from here sideways with some inclination which we cannot actually have. So you had a vertical launch but if you fire somewhere over here in a horizontal direction it will be same as you launched in a, a kind of an inclination from somewhere over here. So we keep on doing that and we keep on firing something like this and this orbit keeps on increasing and this keeps on increasing and it finally attains something that we call an orbit. Before that it is just a projectile and after that it is a stable orbit. Now this orbit has two essential points. This is what we call an apogee and this is what we call the perigee. The point which is closest to the Earth's surface is called perigee. Now if we keep on increasing the amount of propellant that we put over here, if we keep on firing the engine in the horizontal direction, in, uh, in line with the horizon, so what will happen, this perigee will keep on increasing. It will keep on increasing and at some point the this point will become the smallest point and this point will become the larger point and the apogee and the perigee will interchange and this will become perigee you now this will become apogee but we don't want to do this because moon is over here so what we'll do is somewhere over here by the way if you have any doubts in your head the comment section is open for you now the earth is going to be a little bit smaller 
and there is going to be an orbit around it now this is the orbit that we produced this is right now my perigee and this is my apogee but I have to go over there so what I will do is that I'm going to wait till I go get to the other side of the orbit and over here I'm going to fire again and I'm going to if I'm moving in this direction I'm going to fire in this direction all right and what this will do is that this point will remain same I'm going to discuss the Kepler's law in the next one but just try to understand this that this orbit is going to increase so if you're firing in this direction this is the difference between we navigating on the surface of the earth and we navigating in space you are trying to move in this direction you are not going to move in this direction but this whole orbit is going to increase why is that because of the acceleration due to gravity you're trying to move in this direction earth is pulling you around and it's trying to put a force in that direction that is an external force and that is why you're moving in this direction you fire some more and you're going to do this and at some point over here you're going to get caught by moon's gravitational when the gravitational attraction is, of moon is much higher than the gravitational attraction of earth how is that sir because earth is much more larger much massive than moon for that we have to look at universal law of gravitation by newton so newton basically said that force of gra gravitational uh, sorry gravitational force is going to be equal to g m1 m2 divided by r square it's pretty simple these two are the mass of the two objects between which force is going to act and this is going to be universal gravitational constant and this is going to be the distance between the center of these two objects also force is equal to mass into gravity or you can say mass into acceleration to generalize it so ma and this is mass of the body this is also mass of the body so ma will be equal to g m1 m2 divided by r square and here you see the mass of the body gets cancelled and that is why acceleration due to gravity is same no matter how heavy or how light an object is so over here you put the gravitational constant you put the distance uh, from the surface uh, for example from the earth's radius is 6400 kilometer but when you put that over here and you put the mass of the earth you are going to get a which is going to be equal to g somewhere as 9.81 meter per second square but the only thing is that this r is going to be humongous so right now on the surface of earth this is going to be 6400 kilometer but when you are close to moon it is this plus 300,000 kilometer it's going to be significant you calculate over there and this g turns somewhere around like 0 0.02 something meter per second so this low the acceleration due to gravity from the earth to any object close to the moon is going to be and obviously this is going to be overruled by the gravitational acceleration of the moon so that is why the new orbit close to the moon is going to be something like this now we have successfully reached moon and the orbit is going to be something like you were coming over here caught by the acceleration of gravity of the moon now this is your orbit same way how it was going around the earth all right now what you want to do you want to land over here because you want to plant a flag so what you're going to do now this is my apogee and this is my perigee all right so i'm revolving like this and i want to drop the perigee so what i'll do at some point i'll reach over here so at whatever point you are going to fire your engines that point is not going to change the other point the opposite one is going to drop so over here if i'm moving in this direction now i'm not going to fire in this direction because that will actually increase this perigee and over time it will become apogee and it will keep on increasing in that direction what i'll do is i'll do the opposite i'll change the direction of my spaceship and i'll fire in the opposite uh, that became the same so i'll change the direction and i'll fire in the opposite direction and what this will do it will reduce the perigee it is always smarter to reduce what is lesser if you want to make it zero at some point you want to have the landing okay so it will go somewhere like this and then you keep on firing it will come so close and obviously we do not want to crash on the surface of moon we want to land over there and we want to land over there in a vertical manner okay this is how you're going to land so you go over there in the apogee drop the perigee somewhere like this okay 
and then over here also you fire and your again the orbits and the trajectory will become like this the way we started on the surface of earth that's what is going to become over here so on the surface of earth what we did is simply we had something like this we tried to increase this right and over time it became this now we are going to do this and then we are going to decrease it like this by just firing the engines in the correct direction and mind you it is going to take much lesser energy just above in the orbit of moon than it took over the orbit of the earth because over here there is no atmosphere and also the gravitational pull is much lesser when compared to the earth's gravitational pull right and then we are going to land on moon and then it is going to take much lesser energy to launch from the surface of moon to come back and get caught in the acceleration of gravity of the earth and get caught in the gravitational orbit of earth than it would take to launch from earth all right that is why elon musk is trying to have a station on moon because they are going to launch over there and then rest of the journey they are going to carry on from the surface of the moon that's one of the idea that they are talking about right so that's about it i hope that you understood maximum of how we actually navigate through space it is definitely not how we navigate through space on the planet earth the three dimensional three coordinates it is very simple over here it is simple over here also but everything that is going to happen is going to happen in a circular fashion because of the acceleration of gravity wherever you try to go if you want to go over there you're going to launch it but what about this acceleration it is again going to pull and its direction is going to change its direction is going to change right so all we can do is move in orbit if you are going to go out of the orbit you are going to need tremendous amount of energy and that requires the next level of technology but so far so good we can still land on moon that's about it guys i hope you got the gist the comment section is open for you put any question over there i go through each and every comment and i'll reply to each and every one of them other than that you can find my instagram link down below and my website is having regular blogs and i'm hoping that you are enjoying this series of videos on rocket science it's going to keep on coming keep on supporting it share this video with as many people as you can find out people who might be interested in rocket science the best way to do that is in the comment section i'll see all of you in the next one till then bye